Welcome back, YouTube, to my animal house. I got the hot tub pond project going on, so I'm going to build a biofilter out of a five-gallon bucket. It's a swirl biofilter in the same time. Got some sponges. They're all from the dollar store. Got some green ones over there, 10 for a dollar. This bucket was from the dollar store. I just kind of drilled some holes in the top. I'll show you how all that works. I'll go through all the little parts and pieces that I got and... Uh, I'll show you how I build my biofilters and uh, show you how it works. We'll hook it up in the pond and all that at the end of this video. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys learn how. If you needed to know and if you guys know any better tricks than I got going on, please tell me and we can all build a better filter. So here we go. I'm going to set up the camera on the tripod and we'll get going. All right, everybody. We're going to start by uh, the, the where, where the water's got to exit. We're going to make a hole for that. Yes, like that. That's not the right size, but I've got to take the Dremel. And I'll make a tip. Well, I'll show you how it is. Uh, out hole in the back and usually is what I do with this is I just use the handle it's like right that's about the middle flip it over and then I know now this is about you know the other side of that one just a way to measure it real quick Dremel and we'll zip these holes out and I'll make those fit. We'll speed that part up to where it's not as boring and then we'll get to all the plumbing for it and I'll get to showing you how it all works. All right, everybody, look, we have to uh, exit spout all hooked in there. You, I just thread them right in, put a little thread tape on there. Got the old muck exit deal in there. And these are just those crazy couplers. I don't know if you guys have ever used these. I, before I seen them, I didn't even know they had them. We used to take like half inch PVC, put the old washer on it, put the cap on. We can do this inside of the hole or something if you got irrigation and all that. And you just twist these damn things. So if you got a break in the PVC, you can slide one of these on, tighten it up, fixes it right away. It's just crazy. All right, let me put that on there. We got this one in here, and I just use it about five inches. I just put it on the end of the old spout there. I'll put one of these on. Seal here. Slide that bad dog in there. I usually just get this threaded as far as I can, and then just push this in as far as I can as I go. Give that a little tighten, it's no problem. It goes right in there. You just open up this valve every month or so, squirt it with a hose, flush out all the muck. It's easy maintenance on this, really easy maintenance. So that part's done. I'll put this off to the side. All right, now I got my little bucket here. I put all, I just, I just used, I think it was an inch and a quarter or something hole drill and just drilled a bunch of holes in it. And this is where all the, the water's gonna swirl inside of here. 
and hopefully stay down and then all the water will go through here throughout all the sponges I'll show you how that works here Now, this right here is where the water enters, and this is 11 and a half inches is what I use. And then I just usually just use a straight adapter and just slam that in there really good. I, I take the bevel of it off with the grinder. I just kind of round it a little bit so when it sits in here, it just kind of locks in a little bit better. Put this down, I got a T. I cut a little bit off of the T to where it snuggles up in there. Depending on what bucket you get and the distance of this, you'll have to gauge that, you know, kind of yourself the way that you want to do it. And this works out to where it's like an inch and a half piece here. Yep, and this will basically just go up in through here. Go right into there. And these are inch and three quarter pieces. I just put one on each side. And then a 45. Here. Let me take these out and do it a different way. I'll kind of show you how this works. We'll get a bucket and we'll go outside. There's still a little bit of daylight and we'll throw a little water in it and we see if we can get it to swirl. But there we go. You got that T in there and you just put the 45s each direction to where no matter what, it's going to swirl the water as it comes in. So this is the swirl part of the filter. It just swirls in. Hopefully all the really thick, big muck will stay down here and then the rest of the water and the littler muck will come up through and I'll show you how to do that. And as we get going, let me get some of this cleaned up. And then uh, we'll get right back to this. All right, we're gonna grab this here. We're gonna get our bucket. We got the exit turned off number. See, and this just goes right in here like this. Throwing the lids on, then we got enough room to put an elbow and you can take it to wherever you need. We'll go through that here in a minute. But next time you see me, we'll be out in the outside and I'll put a little water to this and we'll get it to swirl and kind of show you how it works. There we go. See, without all the bubbles, you can see them swirling around in there. Alright, well that's how it works. Swirls around and all that. So we'll get back to the rest of the mechanics of this whole thing and we'll get this bio filter packed up. All right, everybody, we're back there after the test. I think the 45s would have worked without all the bubbles from that nozzle, but 45s, 90s, whichever way, just make sure one's going one way, one's going the other way, get a good swirl in there, and you'll get filtered up. That's all that really counts. So that's kind of what we got so far, but now I'm going to pack it with these sponges, and I'll show you how I do that. So I'll get this dried up and then get the sponges ready. i got to get some water because it's a lot easier for the sponges to put them all in there, and... Uh, We'll get the camera a little closer to where you can see what's going on and uh, we'll get to packing up this filter. I just want to touch bases on these. These are like all kinds of different little crazy scrunchies and just little scrub deals from the dollar store. I'm not even sure what that one's even all about. But they're all just like filter media. These ones are torn apart of these ones and it's if you put them in different stages I'll kind of show you how they work and then uh, I'll get the camera set up so we can kind of see inside of what I'm doing and then... Uh, We'll get the filter and we'll get this part of it in there and then we'll go on to the green ones after that. All right, let's get this in here. I drew like kind of an opening hole just for the, the muck out hole. I just kind of put it kind of close to there. And yeah, I put on these black gloves because these sponges, they just tear at my fingers after a while. 
Thanks, guys. Just take all these scrunchy looking ones and I'll pack them on the sides here. What this does, it'll build like a really kind of a barrier to where everything will push through these holes instead of around the sides. Even though some will go through, but even then the, the filters will help, or the sponges will help filter it as it comes up through. So you really don't lose nothing. Everything's getting filtered no matter what you do. that I tore apart that I told you about I just kind of lay these in here after this all this is all just kind of trial and error you can pack all this kind of stuff in here all you want and just kind of different stages it's got a lot bigger holes to where more stuff can go through and the more we go up the bucket as we build we'll put different sponges that'll are more coarse and take out more sediment out of the water take all these Take all these crazy looking ones, throw all them in there, kind of pat them down. All of this stuff, all these little sponges inside of there, will good bacteria will grow and as water goes through, it'll help filter out the water, all the ammonias. And... Alright, so that's kind of how I pack these ones up and then, uh, when we move to the green ones here, I'll show you kind of how I do this. Kind of keep your whole center there. All right, everybody, just cut a couple holes in these bad dogs. Throw a couple sideways here. And then these. I just get them wet and then I just kind of shove them in there and then lay it over and I work all the way around. Yeah, these sponges, you can catch them at the dollar store. They'll sell you cases of them if you want. They're cheap. You can wash them out if you want to reuse them. If you do, don't rinse them out all the way. Because even if I do put in new sponges, I keep some of the old sponges because there's, you know, and I don't rinse them all the way because there's good bacteria in there that are already growing. time and maybe even two three times how you do this is kind of up to you I've seen videos where guys are just packing in the sponges as tight as you can and then I've seen guys that leave them a lot looser than I do I kind of do right in the middle I watched about 10 15 probably 20 different videos and I took a little bit out of each video of what I thought made sense and I put it together into this filter and this is kind of how I make mine so I don't know right or wrong it is what it is like I said, it works for me. If it don't work for you, build your own. But if you do, send me a link or whatever so I can watch the video. Like I said, I'll just start over again and go all the way around. I think I use about 60, 70 of these things in here. 
That's probably seven bucks. The bucket's three bucks, ten bucks. All the parts. Yeah, you're in this at twenty bucks minimum. But you can buy a decent canister filter for 150, 170 to 200. You know, it's like. But these are cool, and if you like doing things yourself, like I do, then this is the way to go. Just gotta remember, like once a month. Once every couple months, whatever. It depends on how many fish you got in there, really. Just kind of open up that valve. You shoot water through here and just a lot more pressure than the pump that you have to where it'll knock a lot of the dirt loose and, and flush out a lot of that muck. And then you don't have to mess with the filter as many times from the inside. The more times you flush out the muck, the less times you got to repack all these filters. to help hold it down for a second while I cut a couple more of these sponges for the to hold everything in place. usually what I do and on this one is what I do is I kind of take some of these and I just kind of line in the sides a little bit here just kind of fold them in half to where we can fill up some of this gap that causes from going around in a circle hope I'm keeping my bucket in the camera Cut this one. Get in there like that. I'll go around one more time with these. Like I said, you can do this all you want. I do know which out of the I've built probably 15, 20 of these things and I do it a little bit different probably each time. It's like a joke. The more times you, you know, do it, the more times you tell it, it changes a little bit. But I do know if you do them too tight, is what will happen is you'll just all of a sudden, or like if you have to shut off your pump or something, sometimes you don't even notice right away, except for your water would be kind of green sometimes. But a lot of times if I'm shutting down the pumps for something and the, and the, and the filter drains, and then I do my work and get, you know, whatever I have to do with the pond, and then... Um, if I turn it back on and then the water starts back up through this again, it'll come out just thick green. And if it ever does come out, like I'm just throwing little odds and ends sponges in here to fill up space. But if it does ever come out like really thick green like that, you know that you got it too tight. There's not enough water flow to, to keep everything balanced. So I'm just going to fill a bunch of these. I mean, all these sponges, all it does is just grow good bacteria everywhere. It's like, it's crazy. It'll filter out muck and just, it'll grow good bacteria. Yep, filter out your water, keep your water clean, your fish are happy, everybody's happy. I'm going to do one more circle, I think. Yep, I'm going to do one more circle around. And then we'll put on the top, and I'll show you how to do all that. And we'll finish it up and button it up. Like I said, any way, anything you want to change, it's all basically the same, just principle. Just pack it up however you want. If you got tons of fish, maybe a little bit looser, 
if you don't have as many fish you can go a little bit tighter it'll get out more of the muck last I'll do this last layer finish this up and I'll cut these other ones and just kind of spread them out and even up the top a little And then I got this grate right here. That it's basically the top of a lid. It's an old one that I made. You'll see how I make the lids here in a second. And I just drilled a bunch of holes. Just this just kind of helps hold everything down because I throw a bunch of rocks in here. this yeah, it's some kind of a drain I got at Lowe's I kind of opened it up a little bit more I just put it right here in front of the opening and stop all the bigger rocks from going in I got these big old rocks this is basically just to hold the media down to where it doesn't float up to the top where the where the lid is and then it'll float way up and this will kind of help hold it down just the lid and I'll show you how to do that here in a second all right everybody basically I just drill a hole in the top and then I just take a dremel and then I just dremel out the hole to where it fits the half inch pipe it is the better it is and these are food grade safe food grade safe buckets and then the sealed lids that have the rubber gasket inside and then this bad dog I'll just... sorry for that being loud but... done all right Take this down. Maybe we'll run a little water through here and uh Get it all rinsed out and get it ready for the pond. More leaks 
that's on the bottom so far, that's good. Everybody, that's my swirl biofilter five gallon bucket I hope it helps you hope it keeps your pond clean it keeps my pond clean and like I said before you know if you like this video please give it a like subscribe to my channel this filter works for me if it don't work for you build your own and if you do leave me a link I'll watch your video